and we're live hey everybody some of you are already here waiting I know I do want to leave a quick note if you're watching this on the replay and you're like hey I wish I could have been there live but I didn't know this was happening make sure that you turn on post notifications for my channel so just ring that little bell next to the subscribe button and then you'll get notified when I'm live so then you will know that this is happening and you can come hang out with us and chat with everyone in real time. Uh, now with that said, I wanna talk to the people who are actually here live. So say hi, let me know what you're doing, um, you know, how your day's going, maybe where you are in the world. Uh, Natalie's here, Natalie says hi and excited, well you don't say hi, but excited is what Natalie says. <laughs> that was actually before I went live. Um, but yeah, I've got my tablet here to look at comments as well as always, um, so that I can see when I'm chopping and all that kind of stuff. But we're doing a pretty simple dinner tonight. It's gonna be great for the times when you just want something quick and snacky, or maybe you don't have a lot of time, or you just want something really casual. It's gonna be good. But we're gonna wait a little bit until some people get here um, so that we can uh, actually have some people here chatting and uh, people don't miss the beginning. Now I've got all my stuff set up here to the side um, and there's actually no heat tonight. There's no actual cooking. So I've got everything kind of lined up on the stove. We're just gonna go through it and it's gonna be fun because I don't know if we've ever done one of these where we haven't had to actually like cook something on the stove or in the oven. So it's gonna be a little bit of a different vibe um, and I think it'll be fun and hopefully it's helpful and interesting. And also, um, I guess, I mean, it's in the title, I think. Well, it's kind of in the title. We're doing a cheese board. So if you saw my community post that I did um, in your subscription feed or on your homepage on YouTube, we that was a picture of a cheese board. We're going to be making that. And so this is good if you want to do that for dinner, but also if you have a party, we're going to talk about some things to keep in mind for that type of thing, um, what you should have on your cheese board, what types of things you should have, how to make it look pretty, and all that kind of stuff. Slightly Vegan says, I'm here drinking Kool-Aid. <laughs> but I have not had Kool-Aid in, I mean, it wasn't like one of my family's foods. It's not something that we had all the time. I guess I mostly just had it at like parties and stuff. Um, but I cannot remember the last time I had Kool-Aid. Uh, Natalie says, interesting. I like ideas that don't always involve cooking. Too lazy sometimes. Right, or maybe, yeah, I mean, this isn't the case right now, because it's still winter, but in the summertime, maybe you want something that isn't gonna heat up the whole house. Um, so no cook dinners are good for that type of thing too. Um, and you know, yeah, if you just don't wanna cook. Uh, Jenna99 says, hi Sarah, hello, glad you're here. So we've got a few people here now. As people continue to come in, you know, if you're here just watching silently, at least say hi and let us know that you're there. Uh, but now that we've got some people hanging out, we're gonna get into actually making this dinner. And also another thing to know, if this is your first time hanging out here on one of these live streams, the chat is great to ask food questions and talk about the food that we're making, but also if you have other food or nutrition questions that you're wondering about, I can't promise that I'll get to every single comment and every single question, but I try to work through them pretty well. Um, so if you have something that you're curious about and you want to hear my response, then you know you can put that in the chat too. But with that said, let's start working. So like I said, I've got everything kind of organized, and we're going to start with like the most the stuff that needs the most work and then there's a few things that are pretty easy so first thing we got to chop up some produce items so on the cheese board you want a mix of different flavors and one of the flavors you want is something sweet and I have a couple over things over here that are gonna fit into that sweet category but the first thing we have um, are some pears so I'm going to flip the camera down now so y'all can see the cutting board um, and see what I'm doing and I'll be looking at your comments over here also just so you know before we get into the cutting this is the knife I'm gonna be using today it's the knife I use in basically every live stream I really like it I think it's nice if you are curious about this or the other tools that I use or books that I like or anything like that I do have a link to my Amazon store below the video so you can go over there if you want to see what some of my favorite things are if you want something specific um, and also that's a way you can support the channel I, I should not be waving this knife around <laughs> that's a way that you can support the channel because when you make a purchase through there I get a small commission from Amazon you pay the same price as you would any other time but a little bit of it comes to me for referring you so that's a way to support the channel if there's something that you would like and you would like to purchase it for yourself so now let's get to the chopping I'm gonna try to it's always a little bit of a situation at first just getting this set up so you guys can actually see so I think this is in the camera right we're pretty good um, oh we've got some more comments Jenna 99 says that they buy 
the, oh, Kool-Aid syrup that you put in glasses of water? I didn't even know that was a thing. Interesting. Oh, Nita's here. Nita says, hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing great, Nita. How are you doing? I'm glad that you're here. Okay, so we're going to cut up this pear. Now, for this, we want uh, pieces that are easy to pick up because we're doing a cheese board. So what I'm going to do is first cut it in half. And this is important with anything that is round or rolly like this. The first thing you want to do is try to get yourself a flat surface as soon as you can because that's just for safety because then, you know, you don't have stuff moving all around. Um, with this, actually, we want to get the core out. So we're going to make a second cut. So now that we have our flat surface, we have the stability, we can make our second cut. And then we'll do the same on this piece. So now we have quarters. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out this core. Now this is not the safest way to do this. I should not be cutting towards myself, but it's the way that I do it. So if you're gonna do this, please be careful. Do not cut yourself. But this is the way I like to do it. Of course, if you had like an apple core slicer, you could also use that. But I do not have one of those. And I generally try to avoid the extra tools and gadgetry that I don't need as much as possible just because I, for me, I like to minimize the extra when I can, but you know, you do you. All right, so we've got this, and then I want, you know, decent sized pieces that we can pick up. So I'm gonna cut these into thirds. So we have a nice, you know, pretty decent sized little chunk there. And these are red pears. Um, you know, you could use any kind of pear, an apple would also work great. That's the thing you're gonna see with this cheese board as we make it. You don't have to have these specific items. There really isn't, you know, like a right or wrong way to do it. It's more about just keeping certain flavors in mind. But within any category, you could have many different things that could provide the different mix of flavors and textures and things that we're going for with this. And we'll talk about that more as we go through. So we've got our first pear sliced up. There's some nice little chunks. I'm just gonna slide those over to the side and we will cut up this pair as well. And I will look and check on the chat for a second. Um, oh, RD says, hi from Boston. Hi, I'm glad you're here. Um, Nita is doing well. Oh, uh, Jenna99 says the Kool-Aid syrup thing might only be in Canada. Yeah, I've never seen it, but that doesn't mean we don't have it because it's not something that I'm looking for. You know what I mean? When I'm in the grocery store, I kind of like have my blinders on and I'm just getting what I need and I do not see a lot of random stuff that's hanging around, um, which I think is good because it helps me get in and get out of the store, but also I probably miss out on things that I might like. I don't know, but it also helps me to not overbuy. You know when you're just buying stuff because it sounds good and then you're like, oh, I cannot actually eat all this food. Sticking to the list helps prevent that. Um, let's see. Slightly Vegan says you can't learn to cut away from yourself. Yeah, I guess to me, like doing it this way, Seems like I have less control. Like, I'm, I guess I feel like I'm gonna go like, Shh. I don't know, but I could practice it. Maybe it's too late now because I've already cut the second one. Maybe that's something I need to work on. It's one of those things that like, I don't have a problem with it. I know technically it's not the safest way to do it, but you know, I need to make sure to, to let y'all know that it's not the safest way to do it so that maybe you don't copy it or someone does come in and be like, this woman is teaching people how to cut themselves. Um, cause you know, those people are out there. Okay, we've got the pears cut up. The next thing we're gonna work on, um, are some veggies. So this is gonna give us some crunch and kind of like a nice savory, crispy thing going on. So I've got a couple carrots here. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about peeling them cause they look fine. I try to minimize work as much as possible. Um, so we're just gonna cut them like this. And you know, whatever shape shape or size you could also use like baby carrots if you didn't want to cut them um, or like rainbow carrots this was actually from a bag of rainbow carrots depending on what other colors you have on your cheese board that's another thing you want to think about is having a mixture of different colors um, so maybe if I didn't have the red pears I would have gone for like the purple carrots or something um, whereas if I had done like citrus instead of the pear like a orange that I'd cut or section then I might go for the purple carrots so you know, it kind of, you want to think about all the elements and how they're going to go together. So we'll do a little cut there, and then we'll cut up this carrot. And let me see what else y'all are saying over here to the side. Um, oh, Tamara Week says, hi, Sarah, hello. How are you doing? We're just cutting up some carrots here. We've got people swapping different types of Kool-Aid products. I had no idea there were so many options. Um, but there you go. All right, so... This is the last of our carrots. Pretty simple. As you can see, this meal, as it says in the title, is 
an easy dinner to make and it's great when you don't have a lot of time or maybe you just don't feel like cooking a lot of stuff but you want something you know that looks nice or if you want to do something like this for a party it's a really easy thing to make so i'm just going to set the carrots to the side and let them do their thing uh, and then we will move on to our next veggie uh, don't mind the sounds in the bathroom, that's just Jason Hello. cleaning. <laughs> Jason is here, if you didn't hear him come in the door when he came in. Um, but he is cleaning a litter box right now, off camera. Alright, so we're going to do celery next. I can do it on camera. Please don't, we don't need to see that. <laughs> we're going to do celery next. Let me know in the chat, um, have you guys ever made a cheese board before? Because that would be helpful for me to know, just to know like, what your familiarity is, or if you've ever, like, never made one, if you've made one and it was great, if you made one and it was a disaster. Yeah, specialty cheese board All the products. stores. Yeah, are you like a cheese board aficionado and you got the specialty knives and stuff? You know. You have an anti-cheese agenda? An anti-cheese agenda. Okay. Some people. <laughs> we'll just let Jason talk about that over there. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to do about the same size with the celery, you know. It's whatever size you want. You want it a decent size that you can pick it up. Not too big, not too small. Alright. And another thing to cheese board, especially for something like this where I'm making it for dinner and I know the preferences of the people I'm cooking for because it's not like I'm making it for a party. You want to keep those preferences in mind as with any meal you're planning. So like celery is one of my favorite like raw but snacky veggies. Um, so I'm going to make sure to include it. Uh, I think Jason probably enjoys... the Jason! How do you feel about raw celery? How do I feel about raw celery? As opposed to cooked celery? As opposed to other, like, <laughs> veggies on a platter. I like celery. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, like, sometimes it can be kind of chemically or, like, bitter tasting, I feel like. Oh. But I think maybe it's just not ripe or something. I love it. All but right. In general, I think, yeah, it's fun. I'm going to turn you guys straight up for a second. Whoop, whoop. Should okay. We're in the frame, kind of, because um, now there's a few things I want to show you before we go chopping. Um, do, do, do. Oh, Lolly says I should do recipe videos that aren't live, so if they want to see it's a little later, it's short. Well, I'll be honest. Um, I don't love filming recipe videos and editing them. It's not my favorite thing. That's why I don't really do it. But the live streams are fun because we get to hang out and chat uh, together, and I really like them, so that's why I do them. Also, I know a lot of you um, we had a filming kitchen. cook. What? Maybe if we had a filming kitchen. Maybe if we had a filming kitchen. I know a lot of you cook while I while I'm cooking, which I think is really fun because we're like hanging out cooking together. Um, oh, Tam has never made a cheese board. Nita, or Jason, Nita says hi and says litter box duty, lol. Hey, um, hi. Jason says hi. Artie has never made one, um, but says it sounds fun. Nita loves a good cheese board. Jenna99 has never made one, um, but they have seen it made on um, the Basics with Babish. I guess that's a cousin channel to Binging with Babish. Uh, Lolly's never made one. Slightly Vegan says never made one, but I've eaten a whole box of Triscuits and a block of cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, those are things that will be included today. Um, Nita says that she just put peanut butter on celery. Okay, so <laughs> we're familiar with the snacky idea. Haven't made a cheese board, so this is good. So hopefully you guys will learn some stuff today. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next few things we have um, that I'm going to need to cut so you can just kind of see it all and then I can just bring them in and we can chop them. So the first thing we have here are some spicy uh, fermented pickles. There's actually only one pickle left floating in there. Um, so we're going to have that. And one thing that you want in your cheese board, so we have something sweet, we have some like crunchy things with the veggies, um, the pears, the something sweet. Another thing to have is something kind of like salty or briny. So the pickle is going to be perfect for that. We also have a couple other things that we'll get to later that will provide that as well. So we have this. Um, there's also some pepperoni here that I'm going to cut up. So if you want to include meat on your cheese board, things like pepperoni, different types, you know, different types of like deli meats you might want to include. You could have ham, prosciutto, salami, whatever. If you want to include that, there's a lot of options that you can choose from. We're just doing some pepperoni. Um, so we're going to cut up a few slices of that. And then uh, one of the cheeses we're going to be including is this cheddar. This is Kerrygold. Um, fun fact about me, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of cheeses. 
as a kid I did not like cheese at all did not like cheese at all I mean I would eat you know certain things that had cheese in them but generally speaking cheese was not a thing that I wanted um, and sometimes it would make me gag honestly because uh, I just didn't like the flavor at all but as I have become an adult I have found that I do appreciate some cheeses so some cheddars I like I really like certain blue cheeses feta cheese goat cheese a lot of like tangy cheeses because I guess I really like sour flavors um so those are good for me this one is not one of my favorites but Jason likes cheddar um I think we've had this one before it's okay but I'm just very particular I guess so the, he'll probably eat more of this than I will I mean I will have some but like I said it's not my fave so we've got some cheddar we'll be cutting that up as well I think that's all the stuff I have here for chopping. So let me go check comments and then we can get into chopping. Oh, Adam Petherick says, hello, I love peanut butter and lettuce. Huh, you know, I never thought about that, but I guess that would work, right? It's similar to celery. Um, Tam's eating celery with peanut butter right now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so basics with Babish is the informal cooking series from binging with Babish, got it. Um, makes sense, okay. And if you guys have questions as we go, I'm gonna get a drink of water, because I always forget to hydrate during these and I'm just talking and talking and talking. So you need to take a breath, take a break, take a breath, and get a drink of water. Okay, so what should we cut up next? Uh, let's do, let's do the cheese first trying to think because when we do the pickle that has a brine on it so it's going to get over, all over the cutting board um so let's do this now um this is like i said Kerrygold brand whatever cheese you like is fine uh i got this at wegmans a lot of y'all know if you watch my um my grocery haul videos that i tend to do my grocery shopping at wegmans so that's where i got this guy from the cheese department they have a really awesome cheese department there which is nice all right Cheese is open. Now, of course, with this, the amount you're going to need for any of this stuff is going to depend on what you're doing, how many people, all that stuff. Uh, with the cheeses, you want to try to have a mixture of cheeses. So this is, you know, more of like a sturdy cheese. Um, you can have softer cheeses, different types of cheese, and also depending, on, of course, on who you're cooking for, if you know their preferences, you want to think about that too. Okay, so now that we've talked about some of the concepts... Let's go back to the cutting board. So for this, I'm just gonna do slices. Let me make sure we've got a good angle on the cheese here. Um, and we're, let's see, how much do we need? So you wanna protect your fingers, of course. And I'm just gonna go straight down. And so these are nice because you can kind of grab a piece and put it on a cracker. Um, or you can break a piece apart if you want to. Since it's just the two of us, we don't need a ton of any one ingredient. That's the other fun thing about a cheese board is that, you know, it's kind of like little bites of a lot of different stuff as opposed to a, a, a large amount of one thing, which can be fun if you're kind of craving that kind of meal. Uh, let's do a couple more slices. And of course you can always replenish things if you use more than you think you will. But I think, because I think we'll probably break these into like half slices. I don't know. I'm going to go with that. I think that's a good amount of the cheddar. And if we need more, then we can get it. Um, and let me set this to the side on the cutting board over here. Put it over here. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is the pepperoni. Now we'll check comments. Um, oh, Cast199 has a question about orzo. My boss and I are having a debate about orzo. Let's do like maybe five slices of this. Um, my boss and I are having a debate about orzo. He doesn't think it's a nutritious whole grain. Internet says it is. Um, it's just like regular pasta. What do you say? Okay, this is a good question. So orzo is a type of pasta. Um, you know, a lot of times people think maybe it's like, I don't know, like a quinoa or rice or something where it's kind of its own thing. It's just like any other pasta, um, like spaghetti or penne or whatever. It's just the shape that it's in is the orzo shape. So it's made just like any other pasta. So just like any other pasta, you can get one that's made with white flour. You can get one that's made with a uh, whole grain flour. So it just depends on what you get. Um, though I will say that 
Uh, Orzo, it seems like to me, is one of those shapes that's not as easy to find in a whole wheat version. You know, certain things like spaghetti, you can always find a whole wheat spaghetti. But some of the shapes that maybe aren't quite as common, uh, you might have limited selection. So you might find it to be harder. But you know, if you have a recipe that calls for orzo and all you can find is white pasta, I wouldn't let that stop you from making it, you know, because it's not just the nutrition part that matters. There's other things that matter when you make your food choices too. Um, so if there's a good substitute, great. If not, it's not that big of a deal because there's other whole grains you can include in your life. There's other sources of fiber and B vitamins. Um, so yeah. All right. So I took like five slices of this pepperoni. Um, they're kind of big, so I cut them into quarters. So that's kind of that. So that to the side. I need to rinse my fingers real quick. So you guys look at the cutting board and talk amongst yourself, amongst yourselves while I rinse my hands. And then we will move on to the next thing and more questions. Um, Andrew says, how are you tomato queen? I am the tomato queen. And what tomato varieties are you growing in your garden this year? Y'all, I, I'm, I'm gonna put my hand here so it's like we're looking at each other, except we're not. Um, I've been slacking on the garden planning. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't even ordered my seeds yet. I've just started going through the seed catalogs. I'm way behind, way behind. <laughs> All right, this is the one pickle we're gonna have. Um, super behind. And I need to get myself in gear. And I think it's, I don't know what it is. I think I've had a lot going on. I also have a new hobby, which is being obsessed with the group BTS, um, as many of you know. So I think that takes up a lot of my time. Um, but yeah, I haven't been as on top of it and I need to be. Uh, but I will probably, I can tell you the varieties that I will be growing for sure. Um, is that, that's, the, that's it for actual chopping things. So I'm gonna move these to the side and dry my fingers off and we're going to Move the camera back up. Okay, let's see. There we go, we're pretty good. Um, yeah, so the ones that I know that I will definitely grow again this year, definitely black cherry, because it is one of my absolute favorites. We'll definitely grow sun gold again, because I also love those, that's one of my favorites. They did really well last year, despite all of the problems we had. They were still super productive, and a really early producer. Um, so I really like those. What other ones? Um, I think I will try the Brad's Atomic Grape again because they have such a cool look. They didn't do very well last year, but nothing did very well last year because the weather was just terrible for tomatoes here. Um, so I'll grow those again. I will grow the Galaxy, Dark Galaxy tomato, also from Wild Boar Farms because those were stunning. Again, not super productive, but it's hard to tell if it was the weather, but the look was just incredible. Um, what are some other favorites? Those are the ones that off the top of my head, I know definitely gonna grow those. Um, and there may be some others in the mix. Luna, do not jump up on the cutting board. Come here, you. Luna says hello. Hello. She is quite interested in what's going on. And she can be quite the cooking buddy sometimes, which sometimes is fun, but sometimes she gets in the way. Isn't that right? I think she's like a little bit like, what's going on? All right, I'm gonna put you down, okay? Don't jump back up here, please. Um, let me know what kind of stuff you're growing, though. If you have any varieties you're, you know you're going to grow. I'd love to hear it. Um, where was I? Oh, Jenna99 says that I mentioned that in my healthy swap video. Oh, and Cass1199 says, thanks for the thorough answer. Yeah, definitely. I do have a video called, like, what is the title? Like, when you shouldn't make healthy swaps or when healthy swaps aren't a good idea. Something about healthy swaps. I talk about that idea in more detail. So if you want more more about that type of thing, that is there. Um, in the future says, I always get orzo and risotto mixed up. So risotto is a dish made with rice. Orzo is a pasta shape. I'm pretty sure that's correct. <laughs> um, Jenna99 says plenty of carrots, as in you're growing carrots? And also, have you ever seen a food movie or TV show that you wanted to try? A food in a movie or TV show that you wanted to try to make? Um, 
not probably not in a TV show though I do find a lot of things on YouTube either people eating certain foods I'm like oh that would be fun or you know actual recipe cooking videos I don't know if I've ever tried to create something like from a movie I will say Game of Thrones has really delicious yummy food because it's all just kind of like really rich hearty flavorful stuff um, but it's also very basic stuff most of it which I find kind of funny I made a video about that too how people like drool over the food on Game of Thrones or when they're reading it or when they're watching it but it's like y'all they just roasted a chicken like you could do that <laughs> at your house um so yeah Jordan Sheet says your kitty is a twin of my kitty so cute um I yeah apparently I, I find cats online sometimes like pictures of cats I feel like it's a it's a look like I will find cats that look like Luna and I'm like oh wow they look almost identical um in the future says, when you have tomato blight, do you have to change where your crops are planted? All right, so we had this problem last year. Honestly, I don't have much experience in this area because last year was the first time it happened. Probably, yes. I've heard that once it gets in your soil, it can be kind of a pain and like you should burn the plants and all this stuff. I didn't do that. And I kind of plant tomatoes everywhere. So there isn't real, like I don't have one bed that's just tomatoes and then I could rotate out of that. I have like a couple tomatoes in this bed and then some basil and then some lettuce and then some cucumber you know I kind of mix all my beds up which is good because there's a lot of diversity in each bed but it also means there isn't really like an area where that thing has never been touched or whatever um so we're gonna see what happens <laughs> stay tuned and see if all my tomatoes die this year um slightly vegan says been growing green onions from grocery store remnants where it works perfectly and fast very fun i've always seen that but i've never tried it personally um oh jenna 99 says luna probably smelled the carrots on the cutting board you know you're absolutely right good memory for those of you who don't know luna loves carrots they're like her favorite thing and if there's like if i go grocery shopping and the bag of carrots is on the table she will like get on the table and like start rubbing her face all over them and it's like one of her favorite things carrots um yeah, Cats and Pats says so true. Cats and Pats is my husband Jason, if you don't know. He's a channel about cats. And our cats are heavily featured, obviously. Um, Adam says, you inspire me to grow a bigger garden. That's true. Thanks for all your tips. Oh, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, the garden is, you know, it's a hobby and it's fun. And I really enjoy it. And I'm always happy when, you know, other people can get ideas um, from it. Because I'm certainly not an expert. I just kind of figured out as I go. But um, I think it's fun. And that's one thing I love about gardening is you don't have to be perfect at it. You're never going to be perfect because uh, the weather is different all the time. You're trying new things. But it's always that kind of constant learning process that I really enjoy. Um, Jen 99 says that in one of Jason's streams he talked about um, this toy carrot that Jen and cats like. I wonder what Luna's reaction to the toy would be. Yeah, I don't think she, I don't think she recognizes like the color or shape. I think it's just the scent. But she's really into it. Okay, so I think we're caught up on comments. Now let's talk about some other things for our cheese board and try to keep Luna away from the carrots. That's what we're gonna do. So all of the actual chopping is done, but we do have some other items. So another sweet thing for the board, um, we have some grapes. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the pear that we cut. Excuse me, I'm burping. You could also do other sweet things on the board if you want to do citrus like I mentioned earlier or apple or you know in the summer you might have some great berries um, what are some other things really any fruit would work melon could be great especially melon pairs really well with some of the like um, cured meats um, what else would be good on a cheese board you could also use some sort of like jam or preserve um, fig jam is really popular you could even use like cherry or peach or whatever you like uh, what are some other sweet things? Am I forgetting? You might want to include some honey if you want to do like a little drizzle. It depends on the situation. Obviously at a big party, maybe that wouldn't be easy for people to use. Um, trying to think other things that would be good. Cherries could be good. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of options, uh, but basically you want to have some sort of sweet stuff on the board. So we've got the grapes. We got the pears, that's our sweet stuff. So I'm gonna set these over to the side here. Okay, um, next thing we have is another cheese type. So this is a goat cheese. So again, we had you know more of like a sturdy cheese with the cheddar. Um, this is a softer cheese and it's kind of got more of like a tangy flavor. And this is actually an herbed goat cheese. So it's like the little log of goat cheese, but then it's rolled in, let's see, what kind of herbs are on here? 
Oh, it's Herbs of Provence. So that's like an herb mix. It's kind of all kinds of different things. Rosemary's in there. I want to say thyme. Um, what else in this is an Herbs de Provence? It's an herb mix. It's kind of like a standard mixture. Sometimes there's lavender in it, but not always. Um, so that is all on here. I think it might have tarragon. Lots of different stuff. It's kind of, it's a French herb mixture. So we've got that. Uh, another thing we're going to have are some olives. So again, another salty briny thing. We have the pickles. Um, olives can be another source of that kind of salty briny flavor. And for the olives, I'm going to put those in a little ramekin because while I really enjoy olives, Jason, not a big fan and the flavor is really strong. And like, he doesn't like it, even if I think it would to get on the other things on the board. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in its own little dish so that it can be kind of contained. And that's another thing to remember with the cheese board is using like a little dish like this can be helpful if you had, you know, something that you kind of want to more keep together. Um, also, of course, if you did any sort of the jams or anything like that, you'd want to use a little ramekin or a little bowl or something for that. Um, another thing we have here that I'm just going to put right on the board, Luna out of the olives, ma'am. Thank you. Um, these are some pickled jalapenos and other peppers. Uh, these I actually pickled myself on November 13th, 2017. Um, we've got a few more jars still in the basement, but I think we'll probably finish up this jar. We might even have to actually open another one once we get down to it, um, depending on how much we eat. So, sorry, I'm trying to keep the cat. Hey, do not attack my hand, Missy. You just want attention. Um, okay, so we've got those. Again, another salty, briny thing, and also something spicy, which can be nice. Um, okay, and then we have some crackers. So you want to have some sort of like cracker situation. Um, this gives you some carbs for your meal. The fruit also gives some carbs. So this, I have just like the plain Triscuits. Then I also have the rosemary ones because sometimes you just want the flavors of the food. Sometimes having a little extra something could be nice. And Jason loves the rosemary Triscuits. Those are his faves. So I've got two of those. The only bad thing is they do not sell these in the family size box which is annoying because, you know, that makes it a little bit more expensive because you can't get it in bulk. Luna, ma'am, please. Please stop. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to have to get Luna. She's sitting over here to the side, but I feel like any second now she's going to be in the food. Come on. Come on. We can't be doing this. Oh, she's growling. Say hello to the friends. Say hello. Her tail is swishing. I need to put her down. She's not happy with me. <laughs> Okay, you stay on the floor where kitchen stay, okay? Then we have some hummus. So this, um, if I was serving this for a party, I'd put this in a separate dish um, on the board. But since we don't have a ton of room, I'm just going to kind of put it to the side in something when we actually eat. But, you know, if I was at a party, I'd probably try to fit it on there. So hummus for dipping the carrots and celery, if we would like. And then I also have some spicy brown mustard. So this is another thing that gives kind of a salty, spicy, another kind of like also like the vinegary, tangy flavor. Um, so that's really good to have as well. So now that we've got all that stuff, we're gonna assemble the board together. Um, and I'll give you some tips on how to do that. First, let me check on comments. Where did I leave off? Oh, you guys have been quite chatty. <laughs> okay uh slightly vegan says have you used gardening forums before uh i think we just have to learn for ourselves our own microclimate and varieties yes i definitely look at forums especially when i'm looking at new varieties in the seed catalog i will go on forums to see do other people like this variety uh the people who do like it where does it where do they tend to live sometimes you'll find a variety that it seems like everyone no matter where they are they're like this is a winner other times you'll find one it seems like everyone who lives in like the southern u.s loves it anyone in california is like this doesn't work here or something like that so that can be helpful to kind of see oh it tends to do really well in certain parts of the country but not others and how that lines up with me but you're right a lot of it is trial and error and sometimes stuff just works well in your area or doesn't work well in your area. And that's when it's helpful to know other people who garden in your local community. That's great. I don't have like a ton of gardening friends. I don't have like a garden club I go to, but anytime you can talk to people around you and see, are you having the same problem or what's worked for you? That's really great. Cause it's specific to where you are. 
in the future is getting hungry for the cheese board. Me too. I'm excited to put it together. Um, Adam says that they are growing a purple dragon carrot this year. That's really fun. I hope you have good luck. I haven't had a ton of carrot experience, but the experience I have had has not been super, super great. So fingers crossed for you. Or maybe you're already a master of growing carrots. Um, Nita says figs are good on a cheese board. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. So I mentioned like doing preserves and stuff and fresh fruits, but also dried fruits could be good. So if you had like some prunes or some dried figs or fresh figs, um, but if you had dried cherries or anything like that, that could be another good thing to put on your cheese board. Raisins, golden raisins. Um, Slightly Vegan says that they have thyme and sage growing on the windowsill in a pot. Great for beef. Super yummy. That's awesome. Um, Keegan says, is there anywhere I can get purple heirloom potatoes? I'm in the United States. Um, yeah, the few, I mean, there's, you could look at a local garden center, um, but the few seed catalogs that I have ordered from in the past, and I could probably help you out, Seed Savers Exchange is one. Um, they have a lot of cool varieties. Baker's Creek heirloom seeds is one um those are kind of the two if you're in Vir i mean i think they ship anywhere but there is southern exposure seed exchange is located in virginia which i really like to support them because they're you know around me and they know what grows well here but you know you can get stuff for anywhere from them so those are kind of the three main ones the seed savers exchange baker's creek heirloom seeds and southern exposure seed exchange if you go to those three, you should definitely be able to find what you're looking for. Um, Tamara says, Luna is so pretty. Um, Jenna says, try giving her a carrot. Yeah, she might really like that. Um, Adam says, I like your vlog on healthy snacks to take on a road trip. Oh, good to know. I'm glad that was helpful for you. Um, Nita sending Luna kisses. Um, oh, Keegan says, thanks. Josh Melman says, hey, Sarah, just got a cat and have been watching Cats and Pats. Please say thank you to Jason for me. Jason, Joshua Melman says thank you. He might have his headphones on. I think he's editing a video right now. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. Okay, so we're caught up on comments. Let's assemble this cheese board. Luna, excuse me, ma'am. You got to get off this stuff. She has snuck her way back around. Come on. I'm going to have she is so mad at me right now. She's like, I want to do what I want to do, and you're not letting me do it. <laughs> okay. So, let's, um, oh, Jason's chatting to people in the chat. Good. Oh, and sent links. Thanks, Jason. Maybe I should give Luna a carrot. Luna, you want, well, they're little pieces, but I'm worried she'll... I don't know could she choke on it i don't know all right camera towards the cheese board so for my board you know you can get special boards i guess for cheese boards i just use for us when we're doing like dinner for two cheese board this small cutting board you could use any cutting board that's appropriate for the situation you know size wise or if you want a specific item for your kitchen if this is something you do a lot or you think that's fun you know live your life that sounds good um so what we kind of want to do is have things in a variety of places and also I'm gonna to try to kind of start on the outside and then build up towards the center so you know you don't have like big piles of stuff on the edge falling off so you just kind of want to arrange stuff and you can mess with it you know depending on how it's looking um, but we just kind of want to arrange things so like with the grapes I'm gonna kind of break those off into um, little chunks you know so we can have some over here so that you don't just have one giant thing of grapes people can kind of come in and take some if they wanted to like that's kind of too big so let's split this one into two and obviously I'm for just feeding me and Jason it's not as important that it look nice as if I was doing this for some sort of gathering but still I want to take some time to kind of you know give it a little love this is actually a lot of grapes. I don't think we'll need all these, so I'll put some of these to the side. Uh, and so you want to have a mixture of things all around the board so that people can easily get different things, um, especially, again, if it's at a party and you've got a lot of stuff, then having stuff kind of floating around in different places is nice so people can easily access what they want. 
I'm just gonna kind of do this. And it doesn't have to be like perfectly symmetrical. I mean, it's, you can spend as much time worrying about this or as little as you want, honestly. I'm gonna throw celery in here like this. Maybe we can put a few more pieces of celery here on the outside edge. I know this isn't a perfect overhead angle, but I think you guys can get the idea. Um, let's throw in some carrots. I'll pop some carrots in over here. And so again, you can see we have a variety of colors, a variety of textures, a variety of flavors, just different things to choose from. I think I'm putting way too much. Y'all, when I do this for me and Jason, just casual, not on a live stream, I must cut up way less stuff because <laughs> I don't know how all this is gonna fit. Okay, well maybe, let's put, maybe put some carrots over here on this outside edge. That will give us a little spot. Right, I'm gonna take some of these carrots off because we have too many carrots, I think. All right, so we've got that. Now let me get some of the crackers. To open my Triscuit box here. Oh, let's, maybe we can nestle the olives in there like that. I think that works. And then, you know, I might just, I think I'm going to put the crackers on the side because we're running out of room. Again, this is a little bit of a trial and error situation because you kind of have to see what things look like. Let's tuck these cheeses in here. And then, actually, let me move this. Let's put this towards the more center. I'm going to put the pickles down here. Well, let's get, we can tuck in the pepperonis here. There, that works. Oh, and then I have the goat cheese. So let's get that and just pull that out of its little packaging. And we can tuck that in right here on the side. Okay, so we're gonna have to put our Triscuits on the side. The hummus is gonna be on the side. And the, um, the, what did I say? Triscuits? hummus, mustard. Oh, I didn't put the jalapenos. We might have to put those on the side too. Y'all, I ran out of room. But you get the idea. So if we had, you know, endless time to play with this, or I was doing this for a party, I'd take a little more time. Um, but I think this is, for me just throwing it together right now, a nice little look. And let me see if I can get us a little bit, I don't know, higher view. Is that better or worse? Now you can't see the whole thing. Let's see. Maybe if I turn it this way. Is that better? I think you can basically see everything and how it's fitting together. <laughs> it works slightly. Um, I need to move it this way. I'm looking at the iPad to try to see because I don't have any sort of viewfinder. Okay. There we go. Let me just pull it up like this. Okay. So let's go over all the parts now that I think you can see everything. So we have some sweet stuff, right? We have the crunchy veggies tucked in here. We have our cheeses. We have our kind of salty vinegary stuff. We have our meats here. So we've got all the different flavors, but also let's talk about those four things I always talk about that you wanna have for any meal or snack, just for good balanced nutrition, but also for variety of textures, flavors, satisfaction. So we want carbs. We've got carbs here in our fruits. We also will have carbs in the crackers that we're going to have with this. Um, so that's carbs. Next thing is fat. So there's fat in the cheeses, fat in the meats. The olives are a source of fat. Also the hummus is going to have a little bit of oil in that. So that will have some fat, um, carbs and fat. Next is protein. So there's protein in the cheeses, protein in the meat, protein in the hummus. And then the last part is fiber. So carbs, fat, protein, and fiber. We have fiber here in the fruits and in the vegetables. So, oh, and in, in the hummus as well. So we've got a mixture of all kinds of different things, um, which is gonna help us have a variety of nutrients, but also different flavors, different textures, different stuff going on, which makes it a satisfying meal. So now that we've got all that covered, I'm gonna do this. So I can see you guys, and also so I can go through comments again. So what we're going to do when we eat this is just kind of lay it out and 
have um, have it between us. You could also do little plates for everyone if you want. Again, if you're doing doing this at a party, then of course you'd want something to eat for people to eat off of. Um, but you know, it's. I think it's something that's fun that you don't always think about for dinner, but it's nice if you want to have like a quick snacky dinner with little bits. Um, and you, ooh, I almost dropped the tablet. And you can pull it together relatively quickly. Okay, let me see where I am on comments. Oh, I also need to take a drink of water. Okay. Oh, Slightly Vegan, talking about gardening again, says um, that they are trying romaine little gems for the first time. Excited, supposed to be great, easy and bolt resistant. I hope those work out for you. That sounds good. Luna, stop it. She has snuck her way around again between the cheese and the carrots. Um, let's see. Oh, Josh is talking about plants that are safe for cats. I think Jason is responding yeah about that kind of stuff um oh and joshua also bought a carrier that jason recommended uh very fun very good um jen 99 says might be wise to put a big carrot aside in case luna goes carrot crazy yeah she's she's an enthusiast um oh adam says that you can get seeds from amazon too yeah the one thing with amazon for seeds which I mean, kind of with everything, obviously you want to look at who you're buying from because anyone can sell on Amazon. So you want to make sure, I saw someone was selling blue strawberry seeds. Basically they're just garbage that they put out there that they, you know, it's for people who are new gardeners, they don't know. And then they're like, oh, this looks really cool. And then they're not seeds for anything. It's like a seed scam, which who is running seed scams? I'm like, come on people, seriously. But that's a thing. <laughs> so if you see something, just make sure it's a real thing and make sure the seller is reputable. Um, Adam's growing loofah gourds. Um, Jason's parents have tried that before. In our climate, you really, it takes the whole season, um, but they were able to get some, which is kind of fun. Just kind of like a, it wasn't something that was like super productive or for them, but it was kind of like a fun thing to grow. So that's cool. Um, Slotty Vegan says, if I eat the whole cheese board, how many calories? No idea, but good news is, is that our bodies are really great as far as hunger and fullness to make sure that we get the right amount of energy that we need. So if you're paying attention to your body, um, you'll be all right as far as amounts go. Um, in the future, it says, ready to go to Sarah's for, gen for dinner. <laughs> um, Josh says... For Sarah, trying to get started with meal prep, really just doing lunches for the week, trying to keep it simple. Bag of quinoa, maybe I could get ground turkey, frozen turkey patties. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can do meal prep. A lot of people like doing it, obviously, if they don't have a ton of time to cook during the week, uh, to take that time on one day and do a lot of stuff. I think doing like a few pans of roasted veggies can be really great because you can. it's simple and easy to make and you can apply it to any sort of meal you can mix it in with something you can make a frittata you, you know you could use it for dinners you could use it just as a side on its own um really easy to do so that's good um soups and stews are great because you can make a big pot of those um anything that you can like kind of do like on a sheet pan or bake in the oven is really nice because you can kind of set it in there let it go and let it do its thing so if you did a lot of fish at once or a lot of chicken at once or pet burger patties or whatever um that's kind of a nice way to do it uh, talking about plants for cats thank you jason um oh nita says prosciutto is good for a cheese and meat board yeah that's great and really good with melon um, and other kinds of cured meats. I think I mentioned earlier, you know, like salami, or if you just want to do like lunch meats, that could work. Or honestly, with the cheese board, this is a great way to use leftovers. So if you have some random bits from meals, like if you had, if you did a roasted chicken and had a little bit of meat left over, you could cut that up and put it on there. You know, it's kind of a nice way to use what you have around as well in a really simple way. Um, uh -huh. Oh, 
Angie says, just saw that you're live. First time here. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here. I said this at the beginning of the stream and you'll hear it if you watch the replay, but uh, if you don't have post notifications on, ring the little bell. Luna, stop trying to eat the cheese. Ring the little bell <laughs> next to the subscribe button and then you'll get notified. Maybe that's how you got here anyways. Maybe you saw it on your phone later, but when you get notifications, then that helps you be here live. I'm glad that you made it. Um, we've been making a cheese board. I will show it to you now, but of course you can watch the replay and see the whole process um, when we're done. But this is what it looks like and this is what we were having for dinner. And I'm like this, cause I'm trying to show it to you. So I'm also trying not to let it fall. Let me set this over here. So, that's what we made. And I'm glad that you're here. Always love first timers for the live stream, right? Good times. Okay, Mita says, what meal should be your biggest breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Um, I think it all really depends. It depends on what your routine, like. there isn't like a set answer, I guess is the answer. Um, it all just depends on your life and your routine and how you like to do things and what fits with your schedule and all that kind of stuff. The one thing I will say about doing a larger dinner just to keep in mind, not that it's a bad thing, but for some people, if they have a, like, especially if you eat close to bedtime, eating close to bedtime isn't a big deal, except if you're someone who, like, gets indigestion if you eat really late um, or have trouble sleeping or something like that. So you want to keep things like that in mind, but again, it's all about your personal uh, factors as far as your body, also just how hungry you are um, on any given day or at any given meal and then also your routine and lifestyle and how that's going to fit in with the other stuff you have going on um sandra galindo says hi sarah hello sandra glad you're here um and i don't know if i've seen you on a live stream before either your username is not super familiar to me so you might be a first time live streamer as well if so welcome i'm glad that you made it um Oh, Joshua says, yeah, is frozen avocado a thing? Can you freeze it or buy it frozen? Trying to get more avocado in my life without it browning and spoiling. I've never tried it. I've never seen it. I, I would think if you vacuum sealed it, it would probably stay green, but then you'd have to worry about it getting smushed in the vacuum sealer. Um, but with avocados, let me, let me help you. So these are actually perfect. So I bought these a couple days ago when they were green. Now they're at the like kind of brown with a tinge of green. So once they get to where they're perfectly ripe or just a little bit before, put them in the fridge. They last a long time. I've had avocados sit in the fridge for like a week or two because I put them in before they were like, right before they were ready to go and they're fine. So um, that's, that's a trick so that you don't have to worry about avocado spoiling. Uh, once you learn like when's the right time, then you know it and you just know, oh, these need to go in the fridge. Like I'll put those in the fridge after we get off the live stream. Um, oh, Jen and uh, talking about cat things. Sorry, I'm not reading all of your comments, but I, I feel like some, when y'all are having discussions with each other and stuff, I try to let y'all have your chats. Um, but it sounds like Jen and I nine has a great vet, which is good. Having a good vet is important. Um, someone that gets along with your, with your pets. Uh, Nita says cheese boards could be romantic. Yes, it could be like a fun dinner for two. I think cheese boards are also great uh, for kids because, again, it feels it's like a lot of options, really fun and snacky, and um, they can be very involved, heavily involved in the process because it's just a lot of chopping and arranging, which, you know, they can definitely do for sure. Um, <laughs> Slightly Vegan says a food slash health writer I follow says that home cooking is not coming back. Do you have any hope that cooking will help with the obesity epidemic? Um, yeah, it's kind of like, at least from what I see, it definitely seems like cooking is coming back as a hobby. Like it's a thing that people think like, oh, that's like a fun hobby I would do, but not like a daily routine thing. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. People just not having the know-how, um, when you don't have the skills, you know, it's a, you, in the beginning when you're learning it's not super simple right because you're still learning just like anything you're still figuring it out um and so when people aren't learning those skills as they grow up then to be an adult and have to figure it out it can feel like a lot especially when you have a lot of other things going on um also people are busy they don't know how to fit into their schedule it's not a priority because they don't have to they could buy food out and that would work you know um but i think cooking is important because 
there's a lot of other like so cooking is important because one it helps people get food in a more affordable way now obviously there's a time cost to it so you have to remember that it's not free to take your time to prepare the food because that's time you could be doing other things especially if you're someone who has multiple jobs and all that kind of stuff um but it helps make food like the at the grocery store or at the restaurant cost less because you're you know you're preparing yourself um, so that's a benefit. It can also be a really nice social activity. Um, it also just helps people learn about food, especially kids. Cooking is so important for them, not only to develop cooking skills, but also just become more familiar with different food items um, and more comfortable and just, yeah, increasing that familiarity. And I think cooking, it's it can be, um, it's one of those skills that like we all have to eat, right? And of course, yes, we have restaurants and other places, but I feel like it's such an important thing to just be able to provide food for yourself. It's a very basic skill and it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, so I hope that more people cook. And that's one reason I do these live streams is to show you guys examples of real meals that I'm making for my family, how it works, how I think about it, how I put things together to hopefully give you ideas um, and show you how it can how it can all come together. Obviously, you know, most of these live streams end up being around an hour or maybe a little bit longer. Um, but I always try to remind people that this is not how long it would take me to prepare this meal, right? Because if I was really preparing this meal just for me and I wasn't, I wouldn't be answering comments in between chopping vegetables or explaining this is how you cut up this thing or this is why we're putting this here. Um, so, you know, every meal I make in real time, if I was just making for myself, would take less time than the live stream. Mm-hmm. Sandra says it is her first time at the live stream. Yay! Glad you're here. Um, that's really fun. I always like to see, especially because if you come to a lot of the live streams, you'll start to learn that a lot of the same people come to the live streams. And we have some people who can't make it as consistently, but um, we kind of have a little crew of the live stream, live cook with me, uh, you know, crew that are always here and it's nice because I get to know a little bit more about you guys and uh, you guys get to know each other better. I think it's really fun. Mm-hmm. Thanks from Joshua. Thanks from Adam. You're welcome. Um, okay, Onita asks, is freezing milk okay does, okay or does it ruin the milk? You can freeze milk. I don't do it myself much, but as far as I know, you can freeze it. Um, yeah. I would look up for every food, there's kind of like freezing directions, the best way to do it, how long it will be good. So just Google that and search for like, you know, FDA, USDA, something like that. Um, like how long can you freeze milk for and you should be able to get a pretty straightforward answer. Jenny99 says, my girlfriend loves to cook. Um, oh, when she tried Weight Watchers and Curves, it affected her love of cooking in a negative way. Yeah, I mean, dieting uh, of any kind can really damage your relationship to food, how you think about food, the way you feel about food, um, which, you know, we talk about all the time on my channel, but that's, that's a perfect, you know, example from your real life of anecdote. Um, okay, so I think we're caught up on comments and everything. Uh, the cheese board is ready to go, and I am ready to eat dinner. So I think we're gonna end the live stream here, but it was really fun hanging out with all of you guys. Thanks for coming. Like I said, if you wanna be here live um, and you weren't able to make it, definitely ring that bell, especially if you have watched all the way through and you don't have the bell rung, you should have it <laughs> rung. I always say, you know, it's not like, I don't think you should turn on notifications for every channel, obviously, because you don't need notifications in your life all the time for every little thing um, and not every channel you want notifications for. Uh, but I definitely turn them on for those channels that I want to make sure I don't miss their videos or I want to make sure I know when they're live. So if this channel happens to be that for you, then definitely do it so you don't miss the live streams because they are a lot of fun and they're one of my favorite things to do. Um, but with that said, I am gonna eat dinner. Um, it's been great hanging out with everyone. I love hearing all your comments and chatting with you. Um, and I will see you again for next month's live cook with me. So hope you're having a great evening or morning or afternoon or night or wherever you are in the world whenever you're watching this. 